Hi folks, Rob Goller here. Thanks for joining me again for our weekly chat about local history. Appreciate you joining me and talking about topics that mostly are brought to, uh, brought by you to me um, as we have discussions. And this week's was this week's topic is um, sort of a combination of I've promised to talk about elections coming up um, since we're in the heat uh, of the presidential races and the congressional races and election day um, in what's coming up in a few weeks actually um, and also uh, the uh, questions about the anniversary of our um, of our village uh, which is happens to be the 150th uh, anniversary of the village of East Aurora um, in 2024 um, so a couple things that have been uh, people have been talking to me about are coming together this week um, and I think that's kind of neat uh, the, the question was is uh, the the village of East Aurora is celebrating its 150th anniversary this week, and there's been some um, uh, uh, articles published. I've I've written a couple, and then the Easter Advertiser put together a wonderful um, anniversary section uh, with a little bit of history in it. And I received a few questions about the vote that occurred, um, which is what we the reason we celebrate the anniversary of the village um, in this year that we do. Uh, because of the vote that the villagers held in 1874 um, that uh, that created the village of East Aurora. Um, and I got a question specifically about the number of voters and how close that election actually was. But before I reveal that information, um, we have to take a step back. So as I've discussed earlier in earlier videos and in articles, is the village celebrates its 150th anniversary as the village of East Aurora. However, we've had a village uh, government, a village as part of our town um, for several years before that. So going back to actually the 1830s, we had a village for a very short period of time um, in the 1830s called Auroraville. Uh, I talked about that previously. Um, New York State allowed uh, have more heavily populated hamlets of towns um, beginning in the early 1800s to form what they called villages in order to have a separate government, um, a district, uh, in other words, to provide government services that may not have been something that people in more rural areas of the towns would want. For instance, lights, uh, maybe uh, uh, police services, uh, sidewalks, things like that. So they allowed um, these areas of the town to incorporate into villages. So that's what, ha what started happening in the 1830s. In 1836, uh, they, uh, 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 what is essentially today the village of East Aurora um, uh, became incorporated as the village of, they wanted to be the village of Aurora, uh, but uh, the state insisted on Auroraville because there was already Aurora, New York. The next year, uh, the inhabitants of the village of what we called Aurora uh, a petition to change the name to Aurora and they lost out and then that village kind of dissolved away. Uh, fast forward about a decade, um, 1849 comes along and the people at the west end of what is today the village of East Aurora decided they wanted to incorporate it as a village. Now the name Willink, which comes from Wilhelm Willink, who was a uh, principal of the, an executive of the Holland Land Company, which was given control of all the land here in Western New York and sold off lots, um, had things named at, after him all over the place. So there's a town named after him. We were part of the town of Willink early on. And then the post office became the, the Willink post office, which served our area here. Interestingly, Will and Willink never stepped foot in the United States, really had no interest other than monetary um, with what was going on in our community. So I find it interesting that we named things after him, even after he died, even after people didn't want anything to do with the Holland Land Company anymore. And that was the case in 1849. Uh, is the villagers uh, at the West End uh, 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 petitioned to incorporate as the village of, and when they when it came to naming their new village, they decided on Willink, probably not to honor Wilhelm Willink, uh, but because it matched the post office. The post office for this whole area um, uh, was the Willink post office, and so and it was located at what is today the west end of the village, down by the Circle, by the Barbell. Uh, Maine and Hamlin, that end of town. Um, and so they probably picked the name Willink just because it matched the post office. A year later, 
the folks at the eastern end of the village um we had two separate hamlets they were getting upset that the they had to go a full mile down to the other end of town to get their mail so they petitioned to have their own post office the post off postal service agreed in 1850 and they um created a second post office at the eastern end of what is today the village of east aurora to make things simple i've discussed this before they de decided to change the name of willink to west aurora so the west aurora post office and the one at the east end east aurora and they were both within the town of aurora um, a little glitch there though is the people living in the village of willink two separate entities but they were living in the village of willink but were getting their mail at the West Aurora Post Office. So that caused a ton of confusion. So they, um, in, after just a couple years, went back to the name Willink for their post office. So, or, uh, correct, so you had the Willink Post Office in the village of Willink, and then East Aurora Post Office at the other end of town without a, a village. Um, and that's why we have an East Aurora without a West Aurora anymore. But uh, uh, the, fast forward to 1874, which is the year that we are talking about because of the anniversary, it was 150 years ago. Um, and uh, the, the people at the West End, which was very interesting, because my theory is that because the railroad came through on the East End, uh, the folks at the West End, uh, some of the leaders down there wanted to extend the boundary of the village to include the East End. So, um, what I find interesting is the f business owners at the east end of town did not want to become part of this, new, the village of Willink. They wanted the boundary to stay exactly the way it was, um, but they ended up losing that battle. And the uh, county legislature, the state, extended the boundary of the village of Willink to include the east end, um, East Aurora, the East Aurora and the East Aurora Post Office. Um, so that was in January. Um, um, uh, of 1874, and then throughout the spring, a lot of things happened uh, legislatively to make sure that this uh, um, new village, the extension of the village could happen. So for a few months, the, the village of Willink um, was the name of this new extended village. Uh, but then they gave, the county legislature and the state gave the people who lived in the new extended village, um, they voted in May to allow, um, they didn't want to probably come up with the name themselves. They, uh, so they allowed the villagers to uh, uh, vote on their new name. And they could pick between the village of Willink, which was the name that it was, or whether they wanted to change it to the village of East Aurora. So um, they held a vote on June 2nd of 1874. And my guess is that there was a real effort at the East End to get the name if they lost out on the fact that they didn't want to be part of the village, they were forced into the village anyway, they were they were going to win the name of it. Um, so they, I have a feeling, pushed to, to have the folks go down there and vote more so than the folks at the West End. Um, but it was very, very close. Remember, this was probably men just voting. Women weren't voting at the time. So on June 2nd of 1874, uh, they went and voted. And um, 225 men voted on the name and 122 voted for uh, changing the name to East Aurora, and 103 voted to against changing the name, and they wanted to keep Willink. So the difference was only 19 votes. And um, when you look at the percentages, uh, uh, it's about 55, 54, um, 45, 46 percent. Um, and I'll talk in a couple weeks about the dangers of per percentages when we look at election um, results, and you can Google that too, because um, when you talk about percentages when a lot of people are voting, it's it's more accurate. But when you talk about a, such a small group of people, 225 people, and you talk about percentages, um, the percentages look like they're it's a wider margin, but when you actually look at the number of votes, it's actually not a wide margin at all. Now, the reason I was asked about this vote on June 2nd of 1874 was because there's over the years there have been several publications, newspaper articles that have had the wrong tally. Um, and I think uh, that it was uh, repeated again more most, uh, recently, uh, the wrong tally. There's been differences of 17 votes, seven votes um, published. But when I, I dug th through the records and I'm pretty positive that this is the accurate tally that I was able to find from an original source of uh, uh, 122 to 103 with a 19 vote difference. 
one of the other questions I received was that somebody had noticed that Rick Oler in his article in the special section in the Easter Advertiser had mentioned that if 10 people voted differently that we would um, we would be the village of Willink today and they got kind of a little confused and then I got confused listening um, but then I figured it out and it's math and it's why I'm a historian not all of us are good at math and <laughs> I'm I'm included but um, he is right if because there's a 19 vote difference, if 10 of those 19 people had voted for Willink, we would be in the village of Willink today. So yes, the vote difference is 19, but only 10 of those people would have had to vote differently for it to change half of those 19 people or more than half of those 19 people. So really the name of our, our village uh, was in the hands of 10 people at that election. If they had changed, um, we would be in the village of Willink today. So not only would we have been in the village of Willink, a lot of if we were named Willink, um, a lot of other things would have fallen into into place with the name Willink. Um, uh, what ended up happening is that because we became the village of East Aurora, there were still two post offices: East Aurora at the east end, and West Aurora at the or uh, Willink at the west end. Um, it, after World War One or during World War One. They merged the post offices, so one of the two post offices closed, and they they created one post office for what is today East Aurora and the area surrounding it. And um, naturally, the Willink post office went out of existence, and East Aurora became the post office to match the name of the village. Um, that was uh, in the late 1910s uh, during World War, or in the mid 1910s during uh, around the time of World War One. Um, so had we been the village of Willink, the post office probably would have followed suit and we would have had um, be having our mail delivered today to the Willink post office, um, in addition to living in the village of Willink. East Aurora School District, um, in the 1880s, 1883, uh, they formed the uh, East Aurora Union Free School District and uh, they, of course, named it um, the East Aurora school district but if we had lived in the village of Willink we perhaps would have been the Willink Union Free School District um, instead of East Aurora so all these things um, uh, kind of were domino effect you would you named uh, you named subsequent things after the original um, of things so those 10 people who might have voted differently not only affected the name of the village but the post office and the school district and other things. So just look around and see all the things that are named East Aurora today that may have been named Willink. Now, do I think that we would have kept the name Willink? Maybe, maybe not. We There might have been an effort, I would imagine. Um, Wilhelm Willink was an absentee landlord. Um, not as, uh, the name uh, has some uh, connotations uh, as that absentee landlord, the Holland Land Company, went into disfavor in the 1830s, which I find it interesting we're still naming things after um, a Wilhelm Willink. There wasn't a movement against it. Uh, and there was attempts in 1870s to, to, to name the village, uh, the village of Willink, um, even though of the negative connotations. There was a whole bunch of things happening in the 1830s against the Holland Land Company, and they actually went away, went out of business. Um, so I have a feeling that even if we, if the vote in 1872, 1874, excuse me, 1874 was to pick the name Willink over East Aurora, that at some point maybe there would have been a movement to change it. Um, especially given that we live in the town of Aurora and you would have had the village of Willink within, within the town of Aurora. Um, but that's just conjecture on my part. I'm not sure if that would actually happen. Um, but all that aside, um, those people in eight, in, on June 2nd, 1874, really um, uh, changed the history of our community in many ways, um, where we're living in East Aurora rather than Willink. Um, and we go to the East Aurora uh, Union Free School District um, instead of the Willink School District, and we get our mail from the East Aurora Post Office rather than from the Willink Post Office. Um, and it all goes back to June 2nd of 1874 and um, 10 people who, if they had voted differently, we would be seeing things a little differently today. Um, so I hope that clears that up, some of the questions about how close that vote was. Lesson learned, um, and, and this is of course such an old cliche, but every vote does count. Had 10 of those people not shown up, um, had they not cared, um, or 
there may have been people at the west end who wanted willink and they didn't show up um so and uh, you can we can uh, uh make uh, theorize all we want about did everybody who wanted to vote show up and could it do is is east aurora really the name everyone wanted well it doesn't matter the 225 people who did show up got to decide um and um and so they they got to make that decision and those who didn't vote were left out so um uh we we've been hearing lately about the national elections, uh, the presidential election being really, really, really close. The polls are saying that. I don't know if I believe them all. Um, but uh, but it, it's not just the presidential elections and the congressional elections, the big elections with lots and lots of voters. Sometimes it comes down to your, your, ver your local elections. Um, and I might talk uh, about close elections in our local community. Local communities, of course, get lots of close elections because there are fewer voters. Um, and consequential elections. So I might talk about that in a bit. We've had a mayoral race that was within a couple votes. Um, uh, and we've had a couple um, elections that have been tied and we've had elections within one vote. Um, so that might be an interesting topic to talk about. But um, if, if you uh, need to convince anybody that every vote counts, just point to East Aurora and the name East Aurora, that if uh, a couple people had changed their mind, we, that would change the, something as um, important as the name of our community. Um, came down just to just a few votes. So thanks for that uh, feedback about it. Um, again, um, the Easter Advertiser put out a booklet um, over the summer about uh, the history of the of the village and celebration of the village's um, sesquicentennial 150 years. Um, again, we've had a village before uh, 150 years ago, uh, since the 1830s. There's been a village around 1849. The village was formed. Um, but it becoming the village of East Aurora with that name uh, dates back to uh, June 2nd of 1874, and that's the date we're celebrating this year. Again, thanks for joining me. Um, again, I'm Rob Goller. I am the Town and Village Historian, but uh, these videos and a lot of my research are not affiliated officially with my position as Town and Village Historian. Thank you for um, the comments and the questions. Uh, again, some folks have asked me about watching live. They don't always get to watch live. That's okay. If they're up on YouTube, they're up on Facebook. I don't take them down. So feel free to watch and comment anytime. Give me your ideas, suggestions, and questions. You can either pop them in the comments or um, send me a private message, which is what a lot of you do. Um, again, thanks for keeping history alive, and we'll see you next time. And don't forget to vote when the time comes. See you soon.